Age may be just a number, but Biden's 81st birthday tomorrow has many in his own party and voters concerned about his mental and physical fitness ahead of 2024. Tonight, The Washington Post is out with a new expose about the panic within the party. And one of Obama's former top advisors is doubling down that Biden is in trouble ahead of 2024. Lucas Tomlinson is live at the White House with more. Lucas? Well, Charlie, President Biden landed on the South Lawn here at the White House just a short time ago, and it's safe to say there's going to be no surprise 81st birthday party for him tonight here at the White House and uh, when the clock strikes 12, and probably not tomorrow either, with all expected to be a low-key affair with all focus on the turkey part and maybe a shot of wild turkey for the staff. But here is what David Axelrod told the New York Times about President Biden, quote, I think he has a 50-50 shot here, but no better than that, maybe a little worse. He thinks he can cheat nature here, and it's really risky. They've got a real problem if they're counting on Trump to win it for them. I remember Hillary doing that, too. Now, on Fox News Sunday, Senator Chris Coons responded to Axelrod. That's an interesting point from David. Um, in 2007, a year out from the 2008 election, I'll remind you, uh, that poll after poll was showing that Barack Obama was going to lose to Rudy Giuliani, and in 2011 that Barack Obama was going to lose to Mitt Romney. Head-to-head -head polls a year out, frankly, don't say much at all. Now, a recent article in Politico by Jonathan Martin titled, Here's How Biden Can Turn It Around. Top Democrats agree that the president needs more aggressiveness, more help from his friends, and a few more friends. Liz Cheney, Rahm Emanuel, and Mitt Romney can help. Says the president's had issues with Axelrod in the past. Uh, the piece warns, quote, Calling David Axelrod a P-word that I'm told I'm not supposed to say on news here. It rhymes with stick, Lisa. As a person who has heard Biden use the word, says he does in private, is not a strategy to win 270 electoral votes. Now, there's a new NBC poll out today. Shows that at 80 years old, soon to be 81, by the way, tonight at the stroke of midnight, by not having the necessary mental and physical health to be president for a second term, 59% say that's a major concern. 15% say it's a moderate concern, whatever that means. 12% uh, minor concern, and 14% say it's no real concern. And by the way, that poll also showed Biden with the lowest approval rating of his presidency, guys. Well, you know, they've had 80 years to prepare for it. I hope it's a great party tonight, uh, tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you, Lucas. Well, 81, 80 tomorrow. Yeah. 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 Well, but, they, but, but the, he just starts his 81st year, so they've had only 80 years to prepare for it. Uh, Dr. Sapphire, um, you know, explain this to us. I mean, you know, at, at this kind of age, he's going to be 86 if he were to win another term and finish. What are the problems? I mean, what, 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 are, what could go wrong here? Uh, anything can go wrong with any single person any day of the week. But, you know, I think uh, congratulations are in order. Happy birthday, Mr. President. You know, he doesn't look a day over 81. <laughs> um, but that being said, age is just a number. You know, that one poll that Lucas just mentioned, that's only one of the many where voters are saying they think that President Biden may be too old. There was another one where about 71 percent thought he was too old. Um, but it would be one thing if it was just the number. But we see his performance. We see the gaffes, his forgetting, yeah. his calling out on people who aren't actually in the room. Then he also has some physical health issues. He has sleep apnea, progressive peripheral neuropathy, doesn't submit a cognitive mental exam. But again, he, so he's not the pillar of vitality by any stretch of the imagination. But I think a lot of voters could actually see past that if they actually were prosperous in their home, if their neighborhoods were safe, and if there wasn't chaos at the southern border. But the, one of the other polls also show that voters across all income levels say Biden politics are, have hurt them personally, where Trump's have actually helped them. So it's not just his age. It's not just his physical and mental performance. It's his policies, too. So, you know, the average age of, of retirement here in the United States is 64. Maybe it's time for the president to go to Delaware. <laughs> you know, can I just say something about that? It's such a good point. However, every politician can change any policy they want. Every politician can undo any gaffe they made, and Joe used to be known for gaffes. But you can't change your age, and you can't change mental decline. Right. And that's what he can't do and his staff can't do. It's, it, it's hard to imagine it getting better from here at this point. 
Well, sense. I mean, you would like to think it couldn't get worse, but I mean, my True. God. But, you know, I, I think that quote Please from, don't, don't dare anybody I'm, I'm to sorry. make it exactly. I'm, I got, <laughs> They'll Lord figure out a way us. to make it worse. <laughs> they sure will. Uh, you, but that David Axelrod uh, quote is something, though. I mean, talk about yeah. shots fired, saying that Joe Biden has a 50-50 chance of winning, maybe worse. Uh, you know, and, and what's interesting is even though Obama picked Joe Biden as his VP, he's not had any confidence in him as a presidential candidate. I mean, there, was, there were reports that in 2016 he pushed him out of the way. Of course, he has that infamous quote, don't underestimate Joe Biden's right. ability to F things up. We've learned that lesson the hard yeah. way because it's all messed up. You know, and he's probably looking at that New York Times poll showing Trump winning it in five out of six swing states now trailing with, you know, black men, young voters, independent voters. You know, the list goes on. However, my big concern and my caveat is that because Joe Biden is looking so weak, I'm worried about what they're going to try to do to Trump with all these court cases. Yeah. Are, are they going to ramp that up? Are they going to try to keep him oh. in, in the courts throughout the general election, take up all his money so he's not spending it on winning an election? Well, it already feels so. like they're doing that. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's one it's, after the other. Yeah, they're, they're sort of emptying everything on him already. Uh, but, uh, but, Lisa, I want you to respond to this. Uh, this is a quote from, uh, uh, you know, that they're having trouble when the Washington Post is talking about this stuff. Uh, the bad news is that everybody is wetting the bed inside of Biden world. It's really an unhappy confluence of Biden world donors, cocktail party friends saying, can you get him not to run, which is stupid and absurd if you know Joe Biden. Charlie, there's always depends. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, yes. Bed wedding, especially yes. at 81. So that would be my suggestion. But, uh, you know, look, there are, I mean, it'll be interesting. They're running out a little bit of time to try to get yeah. Joe Biden out of the way. Clearly, I think that's the desire of the party. And then you've got the Kamala problem as the vice president, who is the most unpopular vice president in, I think, modern history. Uh, so then there's two people that you have to push out of the way. So I don't know, maybe they'll try to do some sort of tomfoolery at the uh, contested convention or at the convention or something like that. But they're running out of time to try but to that get would be difficult, though, because if you wait until the convention and Charlie, you know, this matters, you're going to miss all these deadlines to be on ballots. So you would absolutely uh, uh, significantly handicap whatever younger Democrat you were going to give an opportunity. And that's why Axelrod is so being outspoken, saying it, do it now. But Lisa makes so, the point it's going to be very difficult the because the only... No, not the Japan. It's about Kamala Harris, because the only person who polls less favorable than Biden is Kamala Harris. So they have a big problem on their hands. And so and obviously they have put, done this all out effort with student loans and stuff like this to go after young voters. But this new uh, NBC poll shows Trump losing to buy. I mean, Trump uh, Biden losing to Trump by four points uh, between uh, f among voters 18 to 34. Listen to the freak out on N uh, NBC News. Some real stunning highlights here in this poll. Donald Trump, we have at 46 percent. Biden, 44. And this is significant because this is the first time in the history of our poll that former President Trump beats President Biden. Is 50 points underwater with the youngest group of voters. So, I mean, all the student loan forgiveness was for naught? It's not working out? He needs to find more money to give him? Uh, Do we have more money? <laughs> apparently not. And, you know, the, the thing that's significant about this is, and we're talking about the aging, it has to be incredibly frustrating for Joe Biden that Donald Trump is just three years younger and not suffering the same visual mental decline or even the aging process in the same way. And the court cases that Lisa brought up, really, if you paint the contrast on one side, Joe Biden, and I cover the White House, so I was just in Wisconsin a couple weeks ago, I saw you know, the, the fragility of him to come out to give a speech and he's reading a prompter and he goes... Trump's in Texas getting endorsed by Abbott. He's fired up on the border, which is an a issue that's going to significantly hurt the Biden's uh, administration because the border's a dumpster fire. But you've got a contrast of a guy that's fighting judges in multiple courtrooms. He's doing the big rallies still. He's out there in the border. And yet you, you just there's a there's a clock ticking on how long his staff can protect him. And by the way, I want to make this point when I saw this topic. You've got 500 people writing a letter, signing a letter that their boss yeah. is doing the wrong thing on Israel. How about one staffer in this White House that sees what we see on the White House press corps? 
stand up, sign your name to something, and say he's got to go. But I just want to add real, real quick, complacency is the devil in yep. politics, and we are so far out from the general election, so I don't want anyone to think that this thing, we've, we've been burned in the past three election cycles, including the off-year election. Democrats completely appended the political process with mail-in voting during COVID, so it is a totally different ball game. Historical norms are no longer relevant, so nobody get complacent. And as you pointed out, Dr. Sapphire, it, it, at the end of the day, it is going to come down to these issues, yep. I think, and uh, people feel, you know, how they feel about the, personally about their own issues, especially economics. So, I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilme. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.